Hey guys and dolls and welcome back. So today I am playing dress up as Belle. I uploaded a video a couple of days ago showing you all the amazing dresses that just came out at Torrid. I'll have a link to that video in the description bar down below. Today's look is all about just looking beautiful and feeling like a Disney princess. So I went with a pretty light eye makeup look. It's very easy to do using just one palette that you can get at Target. This is the Sonia Kashuk Eyes on Neutral Palette. This is one of my all time favorite neutral palettes. Never mind the fact that you can get it for about 20 bucks from Target. I'm also gonna be using this brow palette and kind of explaining my philosophy with brows, um, which is to actually use more than one color. I think it looks a little more natural and things like that. Lots of uh, inexpensive products. I'm also going to be using some of my favorite things like this foundation from uh, Makeup Forever. The water blend is amazing. So this is just a really fun look. It's beautiful. It's absolutely applicable to use as an everyday makeup look, but it's perfect for Disney bounding or doing cosplay as well. I'll also be showing you guys how I did my hair today. Really fun, very flattering look, and it's pretty easy to do, to be honest with you. Uh, if you like these dress up videos, I will have a link in the description bar down below to my cosplay playlist. And I'd like to make doing these uh, dress up videos a little bit more of a regular thing. So if you like it, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Yay! Okay, so to get started with today's video, I will be using a sample of the anti-aging primer from Corez. What I really like about this is um, it's very like lotion-like. It's more like a moisturizer. So as far as primers go, it's not maybe going to be like the most, it's not going to be the best at like covering pores and things like that, but I don't tend to really like a lot of heavy primers lately. In fact, a lot of the makeup today, um, even though I will end up with a full coverage, I'm using and layering products that are a little bit lighter to achieve that look. So the next product I'll be using is the Makeup Forever Water water blend foundation and this stuff is awesome. It is 80% water but it's also water resistant and transfer resistant uh, but it's quite sheer. So it's a pro quality uh, foundation that doesn't give you tons and tons of coverage but because and it's like kind of similar to a tinted moisturizer too. So I love tinted moisturizers because especially for daily wear and things like that I don't really like to have that masked out completely flawless, I woke up like this kind of look. I tend to prefer a little bit more of a natural look because I think that it actually looks more youthful. Uh, but with tinted moisturizers, a lot of them are oil-based or silicone-based, and that's great for minimizing, you know, the appearance of pores and things like that, but they always break down on my skin throughout the day. They always start to look a little funky, um, whether my skin gets super oily, you know, then they'll break up that way, or um, if my skin is particularly dry at the moment, it'll hold on to dry patches. Whereas something like this, you can see, you know, it is evening me out, but it just looks like my skin. I still have a sheen because this is a very dewy foundation, uh, but because it's a long wear pro, pro product, um, it really just, it stays in place. And because it's water-based, it doesn't break apart as much on my skin. In fact, at all. Uh, this is one of the few foundations that looks about as good when I take it off as it does when I put it on. You'll notice I'm applying this with my hands. This is my favorite way to apply it, it's just with my fingers. Um, I find that beauty blenders, uh, because this is mostly water, will suck up too much of the product. Even, even with like plenty of water on the beauty blender, it'll still suck it up too much. And you also can layer this. You'll notice I'll put a little extra in places where I tend to be extra red. Another little tip when you're using something like this to help minimize the appearance of pores is to really kind of work it into the skin. I find that's more, more effective sometimes than actually um, using like silicones and stuff that just sort of create a barrier on top of the skin. Okay, so as you can see, it's not perfect, but it's definitely evened out and this is going to look great all day. So for concealer today, I'll be using the Select Moisture Cover from MAC. This has hyaluronic acid in it. It has a slightly peachy tone. I use the shade NW15. And what I do is I'll dot it on. This isn't like a super high coverage concealer. So I'll dot it on in places where I need coverage. And then I let it hang out for a little bit. By letting the concealer sort of dry on the skin a bit, the moisture in it will start to evaporate and then it'll be a little more full coverage. Really great way to get a little extra coverage out of a concealer that you really love the texture of, but isn't quite the, uh, the uh, coverage that you need. To set with powder and to give me a little bit more coverage, I'll be using some MAC Studio Fix Powder. Uh, this is an NW3, or just N3, sorry. And to apply this, I'm using a softer brush. Uh, because I want to get a good even coating of the powder, but I don't want it to be too thick. So I'm using a Wayne Goss Zero. So as you can see, we still end up with a really full coverage foundation. It's just a little bit different of a method to achieve it. So for brows today, I'm going to get started out by just kind of combing them in place and making sure that I don't have any wild hairs or anything going on. I do have one like really stubborn 
here on this side, but whatever. I'm going to be using the Pixie by Petra brow palette. This stuff, oh God, this, this brow palette's awesome. It has everything you need from a highlight to multiple different brow colors. You can do anyone's brows with this. What I like to do is take a uh, angled brush like this. This one is from Smith Cosmetics. This does come with a brush, but it's, it's awful. Um, and I'll grab this brown, this dark brown shade. And I start out with the top of the brow. I go inside the parameter of my own, like where the hairs actually are. But by drawing a line, it cleans it all up and makes it look a little bit more cleanly shaped. Like you can see the difference here. And I haven't actually added any color really above where my brows are. I've just sort of cleaned up the shape. And I'll bring that all the way in to where the brows, the brow hairs start to get a little bit more sparse. And then I'll use the lighter brown color just above it and use that to fill in. This is a bit warmer than my natural brows are, but I think it's perfect for a bell look. And if at any time you feel like you've like gone too dark or anything like that, you just bring in your spoolie. It's a great thing about powders. It's a lot easier to take away versus something like a pencil. And then in the tail end of my brow, I have a couple of like bald spots or where it's a bit sparse. So I'll actually take the black from the palette for uh, my eyeshadow base today, I'm using Max Painterly Paint Pot. I'm applying this with a synthetic fluffy brush. Just want to get like a nice diffused amount of the product on. I don't want to have it too heavy. I noticed that if I apply Painterly all the way up to my brow bone, it's a bit dry unless I kind of buff it out with something else. So I'm using the uh, brush that I used to buff out my concealer earlier. So for the eyeshadow today, I'll be using the Sonia Kashuk Ion Neutral Palette. This is my absolute favorite drugstore neutral palette, and it's really the quality just knocks my socks off. They're super buttery and blendable, and just the texture is really nice. It doesn't look too dry or anything on the skin, which is really important to me. So I'm going to pick up uh, this brown here. It's a nice neutral brown, not too red, not too warm, and I will place this right in the socket line of my eye. Going in with a very light hand, which is why I'm using like a big round fluffy brush, which is going to give us a more diffused application. Whereas if I went in with something like a little more blunt, a little more heavy handed. Next, I'm going to use this beige color right above it in the palette, and I will sweep that all over the lid. Whenever you use a fluffier brush, you're going to be able to cover a wider area faster and you're gonna get a little bit more of a diffused color application. Next, I'm gonna use the uh, third, third highlight color over, and I'll apply this not only to the brow bone highlight area, but I will actually sweep this all over to make the whole thing just a little bit more diffused, even lighter. Having the same color all over the lid as like a veil makes this photograph amazing. Using Mad Max Brown Tattoo Liner from Kat Von D, any brown liquid liner you love will work. I'm just gonna stamp this across my lash line and then go over it and smooth out the top edge as necessary. Letting the line get slightly thicker in the outer edges. And end it with just the tiniest little flick up. And then finish up the inner corner with the thinnest line as possible. Using Duo Lash Adhesive, I will take a lash applicator and a pair of the Jasmine Lashes from Kiss. I will place the lash onto my lash line and then press it in. And then once I have it placed with the lash applicator, I will go ahead and take the back end of the applicator and really press the lashes onto my lash line to make sure I have a really, really nice placement and that they adhere well. Put some mascara on both my naturals and my falsies. This is the fiber wig. Love this stuff. It's a tubing mascara, which means that it has a warm water removal. And uh, because of that, it doesn't smudge. It's the best. These ones on this side are a little too curled, so I'm gonna uncurl them a bit with uh, my mini Japanese lash curler okay. again. I'm going to show you how to get your eyes a little bit bigger and brighter um, using just some simple techniques, not necessarily particular eye products. So I'm going to use some of the colors from this palette. I'll use the same brown that we used in the crease earlier and a little uh, angled brush. And I will draw a line just below my lash line. 
kind of following a little bit of a natural fold that my eye naturally has. You can just draw this a little, just, I mean, we're talking like a half a millimeter below your lash line. And then extend that line right here, a little bit lower in the outer portion of your eye, like that. Next, I'm going to take the cool gray and just go over it just to cool it down a little bit because it's a bit warmer than what I'm going for, creating a shadow. Next up is to use a very pale uh, inner rim color. I'm going to be using Extra Bright from Pixie. This is an awesome inner rim color. As you guys know, I used, um, as you guys know, I recently bought the NYX Cosmetics uh, Faux White Collection. I bought the linen and seashell and a couple other colors. Those for me are a little bit too intense. They're too pigmented and they end up looking really kind of um, just overdone for an everyday makeup. So for something where I want the effect to be subtle, I prefer this one from Pixie. So it's just minorly translucent kind of color, so it gives you the effect that you want without that kind of cartoonish look, which I guess for this look wouldn't be so bad, uh, but it's still something I try to avoid. Next for bottom lashes, I'm using Skinny Mascara from Wet n Wild. It's a very thin, tiny, tiny mascara brush. Not actually my favorite, but I like the shape of the brush, but I don't really care for the formula. It's very dry. So it takes some Take some work to get it where you'd like it to go, but with this particular look, I'm going to over apply the mascara. I'm going to do more than I normally would because I want it to be really visible from far away and give me that kind of cartoonish Disney princess-ish look. It's a bit clumpy like that was, that was not cool. As my under eye tends to get a little bit darker, um, I'm just going to take a little bit of this MAC Prep and Prime. This is a uh, highlighter in the shade Radiant Rose. This is awesome, awesome. I'm just Thank blending you. that out with a furless brush. This gives me a little bit of a highlight. And it's going to punctuate what we put on before. I tend to get a little bit of a yellow tone out here in this part of my face right here. So this will just highlight it and make it look seamless. So the final step for the eyes is just to finalize the eyebrows. I'll be using the Pixi Natural Brow Duo. This is an awesome product that has a pencil on one side and then a tinted brow gel on the other. I'm using the shade Soft Black. I like it. It's a nice cool tone color. It's great um, for anyone who does have black hair, but it's also really great for anyone who has gray or taupe colored eyebrows. So you can see it's slightly cooling down the colors that we applied earlier. So when I do contour, I tend to prefer less of a precise application and something a little more diffused because I think it looks more natural. So I'm taking a rather large brush. This is an IT Cosmetics Chic Blush. And I'm using one of the gray kind of colors from my uh, Lunatic Cosmetics co uh, contour palette. Couldn't think of it. I was like, the blush palette. And I'll apply it as diffused as humanly possible, just kind of in a general area. If I feel like I've done too much, you can always use your powder brush to sort of soften it down. These blend incredibly well. So for blush, I'm going to use a combination of this lightest one, which I already picked up, and this sort of terracotta color. Tap off the extra, and I'll go really lightly, sweeping it onto the, the apples of my cheeks, and then slowly work it back. Be very delicate about this application, um, at least for myself personally, because I'm so pale. If I go a little more heavy-handed, it's going to be a little bit too much, and I want a nice, soft natural blush today. In terms of highlight today, I'm going to go pretty natural. The first thing I'm going to do is actually use the little yellow from this palette and use that in the center of my face because it's slightly yellow toned. It'll also help to minimize redness. So this is nice just to kind of apply all over, to be honest. For like a shimmery cheekbone highlight, I think it is nice to do with a Disney princess look and it definitely is going to get me in the mood. Uh, but Lately I've been fa favoring a lot of like really like shimmery duochrome highlights and things like that. Today I'm going to use one from Urban Decay. This is the Afterglow Highlighter in Sin. It's just a nice um, sort of pale beige. I think it'll be nice with this look. So I'm going to place that right here at the top of my cheekbone as well as curving it around my brow. The glow from placing it on places like my nose, my chin, and the top of my lip. Start out by applying some lip primer, okay? And then before that even sets in, while it's a little bit still, 
smooth. I'm going to take Manic Lipstick from Urban Decay, which is a really pretty warm rose color. And by, because I have the primer on, it's going to go on a bit more sheer. It's kind of like applying a lip balm before you do a lipstick. And then over the top of that, I'll use Rush, which is more of a cool toned rose. I think the two together is a really great combination. Rush on me can go a little bit cool toned and a little a little more mauve than what I'm going for with today's look. So now that I've applied my lipstick, I will then finish up with lip liner. And I know this is seemingly out of order for a lot of people. So once I've filled the lips in, I will then go around the outside edge and perfect the shape with a matching lip liner. So this is Rush from Urban Decay. And I start out with a cupid's bow on the side of my lip that doesn't have a lip scar. And I go ahead and I extend the lip at the inner corner here. And at first it looks kind of strange until I've done the rest of it. It looks a little overextended. But once I have the other side done and I've balanced out the bottom, you end up with a lip that is technically overdrawn. Like I technically drew it out more on the inner corners and stuff. But it doesn't have that overinflated overdrawn lip lip which I'm just not really a big fan of on myself and it looks very natural and I think it's perfect for Belle who has those beautiful full lips and that's the look um beyond that I need to do my hair so I guess I can show you guys that process as well so I've already waved my hair I won't show you guys the whole process of waving it because I showed you guys in a video last week so if you want to I'll have a link in the description board down below to that video and at this point I just sort of finger through all the waves and stuff to make them a little bit softer because they were just kind of crimped and not like brushed out or anything. So to style the hair, I'm gonna part it off to the side and I am gonna tease it slightly kind of behind the hairline and I'll just give this hair like a very light tease just to get some volume and body when I roll the hair back. So you don't wanna have like some like Robert Smith looking big do or anything, but you do want just a little extra volume. And then I'm just going to lightly roll the hair back like that. It doesn't have to be super fancy or particular. And then to secure the hair, I'm going to use this little plastic clip that I have. That's for when you do your hair in um, like French, French rolls and stuff, but it's great for securing a style like this as well. And then on this side, I don't have any more of those plastic clips. So I'm just taking some hairpins and doing much of the same thing, just sort of twisting it back into the hair to secure it. And then for the bottom hair, you can actually leave this down. I think it's quite lovely looking, but if you want to go for a more authentic bell look, what I would do is I would then twist this hair as well and secure it with a bobby or a hairpin and then do the same to the other side. So here's the finished look complete with my beautiful blue dress and I'm ready to hit the town square and borrow some books and and tell off Gaston and just have a lovely day. Thank you guys so much for watching. I loved doing this for you guys. If you haven't already seen the companion video where I'm showing you guys the beautiful outfits from the new Torrid collection, I will definitely have that linked in the description or down below. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. And that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Remember to be vintage or tacky. Just be your own kind of beautiful. See you, bye.